Hey there, my name is Megan and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a spoiler free review for Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. Before we get on into the review, if you are not already subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I post new content. I post new videos every Sunday and every Wednesday. As always, down in the description box, you will find more information about the books I talk about in my videos. Lock Every Door by Riley Sager is an adult thriller and I have just started dipping my toes into reading thriller and so many of you guys recommended Riley Sager to me so I looked up my library which just opened and this was the only book that they had of his so I checked it out and I could not put this book down. I read it I think in less than 24 hours. This story gripped me. The mystery was awesome and I just wanted to read to find out what was going on. So definitely if you are looking for something that will keep you turning the pages this is definitely it. So the way that I'm going to structure my review is I'm going to tell you what the story is about, the plot, and then the things I liked and didn't like. Lock Every Door follows a mid 20 year old girl named Jules and Jules is currently just in a bad place in her life. She just got laid off from her job as an administrative assistant and she found out that her boyfriend was cheating on her. They were living together so she moved out and she's currently homeless and living on a friend's couch and she is just not having a good time of it. She doesn't have any money saved and one day she comes across an advertisement to become an apartment sitter at this very prestigious private wealthy apartment building known as the Bartholomew. So Jules goes to the interview for this job as an apartment sitter and learns that the job pays $12,000 cash for three months. And due to her circumstances, she ends up taking the job because she needs the money and she needs time to find another job and she doesn't want to burden her friend anymore by sleeping on her sofa. As an apartment sitter, there are a couple rules that Jules must follow in order to keep her job. She is not allowed to have any outside visitors come into the apartment. She is not allowed to spend any nights away from the apartment, and she is not to disturb any of the other residents. The Bartholomew is a really prestige, well-known, rich apartment building that has two units per floor. It was built in the 1920s, so it is a historic building, and all of the residents there are wealthy, rich, famous, and just want their privacy. But the Bartholomew, as Jules learns, has a very sinister past. We learn that the owner and original builder of the apartment building committed suicide. There was several murders, deaths, the Spanish influenza spread through the building in the early 1920s. Early on in her job as an apartment sitter, Jules meets a girl named Ingrid who is apartment sitting the unit right below her and as soon as Jules meets her like the next day Ingrid goes missing and Jules is just baffled that Ingrid left in the middle of the night and no one knows anything about where she went and everyone is very vague about it saying oh she just found another job she left but Jules feels very uneasy about the whole situation and she starts to investigate Ingrid's disappearance and as Jules is researching and trying to find out where Ingrid went and if she's okay she just uncovers a whole bunch of dark sinister things that surround the Bartholomew and its residents. Now I'm going to talk about the things that I liked. So the first thing that I liked was the format in which this book was written. So we start with now. So Jules is talking to the reader about her current situation where she is. So Jules wakes up in a hospital. And then we go into flashbacks leading up to why she's in the hospital. And then at the end of the book, everything is reconciled and we find out what actually is going on. So I thought that was a very interesting format and it worked really well for the story, especially with regards to how the ending played out. Everything takes place over five days, which doesn't seem like a lot of time for Jules to really research a missing person, but despite the small time frame, everything just seemed to play out very smoothly and flow very logically. Another thing I really liked was the setting of the story, and the setting of the story was this old apartment building that was built in the 20s. It is incredibly wealthy, just old money, and there's plush carpet and chandeliers, and there's modern things mixed with old things. There's one of those elevators where you have to like close it, and I just felt like the descriptions of the setting really, really contributed to a very creepy mood. I felt like if Riley Sager had chosen a different setting in a different apartment building, it just would not have been as creepy an atmosphere as this book was. There are elements of just the 1920s, for example, in Jules' apartment, there's a dumb waiter. So just things like that, that really bring up the historical elements and just make this a really unique apartment building and add that bit of creepiness. 
I really like the gothic elements too. For example, on this apartment building, there are gargoyles uh, stationed outside and there's this creepy wallpaper that Jules has to look at and she's always saying in her head that it looks like screaming faces instead of flower petals. So Riley Sager just really knows how to create an atmosphere of just unease and tension. Another thing I liked with regards to the setting is how this apartment building only housed people that were wealthy and private because we don't know anything about them and people that are that private might be hiding something. So we are introduced to a writer, a surgeon, a movie star, and you really don't know if these people are good or bad because they are so private and Jules was told that she wasn't allowed to disturb any of the other residents. Another thing I liked about this book, and this is just a personal preference, is that it wasn't gory or bloody. So there were definitely some disturbing things that were going on. There were people going missing and a lot that had to do with that. But even though it was a thriller and it did surround murders and things like that, there wasn't any gory details that made me not want to read it. I am really sensitive to like graphic violence and things like that, but this book was definitely more suspense and tenseful situations than straight up horror that was graphic. So I feel like if you're someone that really doesn't like a lot of blood and gore in your books, but you want something that is definitely creepy, then this would be a great book to pick up. Another thing I really liked was Jules and her persistence to find Ingrid. So Jules, in my opinion, wasn't an overly likable character and there were things about her that I really disliked, but I did enjoy how persistent she was in uncovering the mystery of the Bartholomew and uncovering what happened to Ingrid. She goes above and beyond to talk to people, to go to homeless shelters, to call hospitals, to uh, talk to other residents of the building, other apartment sitters, and she really was driven by the fact that when she was a teenager, her older sister went missing. So she just doesn't want that to happen to any other young girls. And she just gets it in her mind that she has to find out what happened to Ingrid. So I really, really admired her persistence in doing that. And the final thing I liked about this book was how relatable Jules could be to a lot of readers. There are times in all of our lives where we go through hardship, whether it's emotional hardship or relationship hardship, financial hardship. I felt like Jules, with regard to that respect, was extremely relatable. She's always talking about the fact that, you know, her unemployment check's going to be deposited into her account. It's a whopping 200 and something dollars. And she's looking for a job on LinkedIn. And she is an administrative assistant with a college degree in a big city like New York. And she just feels like she's falling through the cracks and she really can't get a head start in life. And I just feel like that's a very relatable situation for a lot of people and all of us have probably been there. And I felt like Riley Sager really, really portrayed this with our main character extremely well. Now I'm going to talk about the things that I didn't like. So I talked about how I like Jules' persistence but there were things about Jules that I didn't like. The fact that she took this job to begin with. First off, there are so many red flags. $12,000 to apartment sit, red flag in my opinion. Paying you in cash so that the IRS can't track you, red flag and number two. The rules that you can't have visitors, don't talk to the other residents, uh, red flag and number three. The fact that so many apartment sitters have gone missing, Red flag number four. There were so many red flags that Jules completely disregarded because she was so focused on the $12,000. And I felt like this desperation led her just to make very foolish decisions and put her life in danger. The next thing that I didn't really like was while the setting of this book and the mood of this book and the atmosphere of this book was really creepy, I didn't find any of the characters to be especially creepy. Even at the end when the big reveal happened and we find out kind of who was behind everything, I just couldn't reconcile those people and that person with what they were doing. And finally, the big twist at the end where we find out what's going on and why Jules was in the hospital, I felt like that was a bit underwhelming. Now, I did enjoy the fact that Riley Sager tried to steer us in this different course about what might be going on and then he ended up doing something completely different. So I found that was really interesting. I wasn't expecting that, but I just found like the final overall explanation was a bit underwhelming. Was it believable? I guess so. Things like that do happen in real life. But I guess that's also the thing that stuff does happen in real life. And it's been talked about in short stories in other books and movies. And it just wasn't all that overwhelming for me. So while I did enjoy the ending, it just wasn't that compelling for me.
All right, you guys, so that is it for my spoiler-free review of Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. I ended up really enjoying it. Like I said, I read it within 24 hours. I didn't want to put it down. I really enjoyed the setting and the mysteriousness of the plot. I really enjoyed the real-life themes that Riley Sager inserted into his writing with regards to economic disparity and trying to make your way in this world despite economic challenges. I really thought that was well done. And all in all, I gave Lock Every Door four out of five stars, and I can't can't wait to read more of Riley Sager's work in the future. Let me know in the comments if you have read this book and what you thought of it and also let me know if you have any other amazing thriller recommendations and I will see you guys soon in another video. Goodbye!